Hey everybody, I am John Barker and in this episode of Here to Record Show and Tell, we're going to take a look at the ATEM Mini Pro, Blackmagic Design's new Pro version of their smallest ATEM switcher. I just want to let you know that Blackmagic Design has sent the ATEM over to the channel to take a look at for this video, but they're not going to watch the video before it's posted or anything like that. So what's new? Well, the ATEM Mini Pro does bring a few new welcomed upgrades and features over the ATEM Mini. That's things like recording built in, streaming built in, and the multi-view output option. So as we take a look around the device, you can see it's pretty similar to the ATEM Mini. The Pro has four HDMI inputs and one HDMI output, as well as two mic inputs, USB-C, and an Ethernet port. And then we have all those buttons with a few extras on the right hand side to control some of those latest features like the streaming recording and the output settings. So let's take a look at all the new features in the ATEM Mini Pro. And first up is recording. Now this is something I wanted to see in the ATEM range for the longest time. To make it work, all I need to do is to connect up this USB-C SSD and uh, I can get going pretty fast. So I hit that record button on the device and well, it's recording. While it is recording, I can head over to the ATEM software control in the output tab and I can take a look at those recording settings, see how long I've got left on my discs and change between discs, things like that. We'll come to all this stuff in the future videos, but I just wanted to give you a highlight of the recording feature. It works really well. The next feature is streaming built in and this is something, again, I would love to see for the longest time in the ATEM range and it's great to see you don't need an extra device to uh, encode that stream and send it off to the internet. If we take a look at the ATEM software control again, I can tweak some settings in here to get the most of the streaming feature. Out of the box, I have access to a few streaming services like uh, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. And if I just paste in the stream key from YouTube, I can just trigger start streaming and here we are streaming to YouTube. And if I want to, I can set up my own streaming destination. For example, I'm going to just set up Vimeo now. If I open this XML file, I can add or remove the streaming services that will show up in the ATEM software control. I can set up a new streaming service like Vimeo Live, and then whenever I open the ATEM software control, I can see it in the options. And the next feature to talk about is multi-view. Actually, when it was missing from the ATEM Mini, it didn't bother me too much. I did a few gigs with it, and um, I didn't feel like I was missing out hugely. A lot of my sources are within uh, eye reach of me, so it didn't matter too much for me. But I know that adding multi-view to this ATEM Mini Pro is a huge feature for plenty of people out there based on their setup and the way they work. A couple of the things I really like about this implementation of multi-view is the streaming and recording status. So at a glance I can see if there's any room left on my disk and everything's okay on the streaming end of things. These things are especially good whenever you're streaming by yourself. Uh, you can see if everything's working okay. And with the audio panel down at the bottom, I can also see at a glance if the viewers are hearing something or if I accidentally didn't unmute my microphone. Another nice feature of the ATEM Mini lineup is the control of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras 4 and 6K. Connecting the camera over HDMI will let you control color, tally, and the recording of those cameras. I'm going to talk about this much more in a future video, but for now it's interesting to see what kind of integration you can do with these cameras. And the last cool feature to mention in this video is the video out buttons on the top of the device. Now this is one less thing that you'll need to jump into the software and tweak. I can see this being super useful for checking focus on a big monitor before you go back to multi-view for example. So for the big pros of this device is that it basically is an all-in-one device. It's the closest that I've ever seen the ATEM come to being all-in-one. If I had this thing three, four years ago, I definitely would have bought it from the start of my uh, video production conferencing uh, career. It just has the streaming, the recording, I can have that all ready to go. With the multi-view, um, I can put cameras far away and not worry about whether or not they're still working. And um, all of those features together, plus the buttons on the control surface, and it's such a small device, it's basically all in one. And of course the other huge pro and something that people have always said about ATEMs is that you can just plug in pretty much anything into this device. GoPros, cameras, uh, iPad, all sorts of things. And um, the internal scaling and frame rate conversions just sort out all those details for you. You don't have to worry about matching your sources. You can just plug in most anything and it works really well. And uh, it's, been, it's been a real pleasure to have that actually, to be able to just plug in whatever camera I can grab and know that it'll work nicely. A couple of the cons I see for this device so far is the, uh, the fiddly XML of adding uh, streaming sources. I know it, it seems to be like a, a sort of pro pro feature if you want to jump in there and add these things. And you probably only have to do it once, 
but I do think that that is a slight barrier for entry for uh, anyone who doesn't really know what they're doing or don't want to break something in there. Um, I can see it being a little bit fiddly just to get that set up. And one other downside to keep in mind is there's no headphone output. Now for me, this doesn't matter too much because I can plug it straight into a monitor uh, which has a headphone output and that sorts that for me. But it's something to keep in mind if you, um, if you were gonna put it up on a big TV and it didn't necessarily have a headphone output, then you want to find a way to monitor the audio coming out of the ATEM. Let's talk about price. When the ATEM Mini was launched, the price was so much lower than I could have imagined. At the time, I just encouraged people, just, just get one. Uh, it's good to have, even if you use it once or twice, uh, it's probably gonna be worth it. Um, but now that I see the ATEM Mini Pro, um, in some places, it can be up to double the price of the ATEM Mini. So I would say, uh, I'm not so keen to just say, go, 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 buy, buy, buy but it's still a very affordable device with all of those features built in. So um, I think it's still worth it for the price, for sure. If you haven't got an A10 Mini yet, then I would certainly recommend just looking into the A10 Mini Pro um, and not going down the A10 Mini line. I wouldn't be surprised that in six months, a year's time, you'll need to do some streaming or you'll want to record the, uh, a really good quality version of the program. And in that case, you'll wish you bought the A10 Mini Pro. So for the double price, it's probably worth just to save a bit more and go for it. So that's it on the ATEM Mini Pro for today. I will make more videos on this and the ATEM Mini in the future. But um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Any thoughts, anything you want me to test, then let me know. And thanks for watching.